Hello and welcome. The world is getting to be an exciting place. There's convergence happening amongst devices. There's the Internet of Things, as that term is called. Joining me to now understand what this means um, at a larger level, as well as for India and India's engineering opportunity, is Karthikeyan Natarajan, Global Head, Integrated Engineering Solutions at Tech Mahindra. Karthikeyan, thank you very much for uh, speaking with us. Sure. Thank you, Govan. So, uh, the Internet of Things is a fascinating concept, right? I mean, it's uh, I can see how uh, you're adding intelligence over machines, including maybe your toasters and uh, washing machines and then uh, you're making them all talk and giving them the ability to communicate and us, I guess, as con users to understand what's going on, including spotting trouble when it happens. So I I if is that what this is all about at, uh, at one level? And take us through what lies ahead. Sure. No, I think if you look at what uh, has happened to the products in the last 20 years, well, it became smart. Mm. And the real piece of things that is likely to happen in the next 20 years is going to be, they're going to be a lot more intelligent and they are going to help you to do more than what you mm -hmm. is supposed to and few things I can give an example and uh, we worked with some of the customers for example if you take your cars and can it track the behavior of your uh, driving mm. and can it really coach you mm. can it really tell you saying that hey you are braking too much mm. and which is not good for your fuel consumption and this roads are congested can you take a detour because mm -hmm. you know where you want to mm -hmm. go and it can also be a little more contextual based on where you are headed to and you can pick up few things on the flow in terms of some deals that may happen uh, around you and how do you really make sure that it understands you personally mm -hmm. and gets you a lot more information than what you are given today. And so all I this is happening because the car is talking to something, uh, a server in a cloud or something like that. Oh, right? absolutely. And yeah. the way to really see the internet of things as technologies that kind of converge onto it is cloud is analytics, it is mobility, and it is security. Mm. And how do you make sure that you put them all together is what we call them as Internet of Things. Right. And few things could be like connected cars, connected home, and connected machines. And this is going to really transform the world that all of us live in. And when I talk about connected homes, it can connect your security surveillance, it can connect your entertainment systems, whether it is uh, TVs to uh, your handsets to anything that you use at home in terms of uh, video, audio equipments. And it can also connect back to your energy management systems. So it can create a complete different experience at home. And you can use your mobile and decide to choose options in terms of which consumes power moderately, which consumes power on a lower scale and which also optimizes on your energy bill mm -hmm. and uh, with smart grid that is right. going to get implemented, this is going to be the way forward in terms of how the consumer right. should experience So it. two questions. So one is, uh, is this all affordable to a normal person? I'm guessing yes, but I'm sure you'll, you'll tell, tell well, us. Absolutely. In fact, the way that we are thinking about connected car mm. at low cost or at no cost mm. is what we are really trying to really bring out our proposition. Because if you really look so at it. So when you say we, you mean Tech Mahindra? Yeah, from Tech Mahindra like, mm, like mm, ours. Mm. And what we are trying to position to our customers, especially in the emerging markets, can you really make it uh, self-sustained? Mm. I'll give an example. If I offer to a customer, hey, by the way, I'll give you every day when you start from your work uh, to ho or home to work, can you really get an application that will define the best route, which will give you highest fuel consumption, mm -hmm. and making sure saying that you can reach on time, and can it really be afforded at say 50 rupees a month. Mm. So that's something where you need to really create specific use cases that you'll be able to really draw attention to. If you go to a fleet owner and mm. tell them saying that, hey, you are running uh, say 1000 uh, trucks uh, fleet and can I offer something which will help you to uh, monitor the behavior of your vehicles and the drivers and how well are they used. And if you tell them saying that, hey, if somebody is uh, speeding up, which is really creating a higher fuel consumption, can they be monitored remotely and given feedback on a continuous basis? Right. And helping them to improve the overall business So there are three components as I see it. So there's the collection and the sensing point. Uh, there's the conversion into data or the computation of it. There's the transmission of it to some central place. There's the analytics that happens there and then it comes back in a meaningful format, either, to the, either to the consumer or to the company who may do something with Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So where does India have an opportunity in all of this? Or what no, are I think points? if you look at uh, the strong base that we have built up on the engineering, especially on the products mm -hmm. and the convergence that is coming from IT 
and uh, we are probably right at the intersection of the IT and the products. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are not we are using IT independently to enable uh, multiple support functions. Mm -hmm. But now IT as a business enabler mm -hmm. is something which is a reality today. And can you really help real time information? And we can give a couple of other examples. One of the ATM manufacturer came to us and said, "Hey, can I really track my ATMs continuously for 24 by 7? Mm -hmm. What parameters do I need to track? How do I make sure that it never runs out of cash?" How do you make sure that the ATMs run with uh, availability of 99.99? And for that, you just cannot have somebody sitting and looking at things, but you need to be smart enough in sensing multiple uh, mm -hmm. parameters remotely and also trigger actions saying that you send an alert to the banks, hey, this is likely to go out of cash in the next six hours. Can you send somebody to fill the cash mm -hmm. mission? So I think this is going to be a lot more than what uh, we can see. The way I see that is, if the companies are focused on selling products, mm -hmm. now they'll have to move away from selling products to selling experiences, mm -hmm. which will be just beyond products. You kind of make the customer to feel a lot more services that can be sold along with that. And you will find that this is going to be an exciting space for many of the OEMs and tier ones to get into. And that will provide significant opportunities for Indian providers who mm -hmm. understand the analytics, which is more from business intelligence mm -hmm. standpoint, but this would require little more data algorithms and trying to understand data mm -hmm. analytics understanding the system engineering from the product side. So the mix of engineering and IT is something which will really create a new mm. space for the entire Indian industry. Right, so uh, before I come to the talent and how we could feed this, what are the points that we are not as a country ready to take on in this chain that you just drew for us? I think it is essentially ability to understand, conceptualize the business cases mm. is something which is still not clear even in the customer's mind. For example, the same connected mm. cars example, who's going to pay for it mm. and why will they pay for it? So who came up with the idea? I mean, I'm sure it all evolved, but did you go to a customer and say, okay, here's what we can create for you? Or did the customer call you and say? See, I think everybody knows that this is the next uh, probable growth mm. opportunity for every one of us. And to that extent, I think customers also show a lot of interest on the connectivity. And But how do you make right use cases? And like somebody was asking, what are the three, four things that you want to really create use cases which will be paid for? Mm -hmm. Safety, fuel consumption, and the ability to get better information at the right time. So how do you make sure that drive those areas of growth and drive those areas of innovation that you will be able to monetize? Right. And once it picks up, mm -hmm. then it will really go viral and people will really start adopting this as the next uh, best technology that they will right. get into. And if you look at wide now, mm -hmm. Because if you look at most of the telecom networks are moving from 3G to 4G and LTE, I think uh, bandwidth is not an issue. And in terms of data storage, now you will find that the laptops can be brought to uh, uh, smartphones mm. in terms of storage I'm talking about. And whatever in data centers mm. can come to your laptop. Mm. So don't be surprised that the laptops will be 100 terabytes mm. and your smartphones carries about one terabyte of information in the next two years. Because the amount of explosion that has happened in the storage technologies mm. is something which is also making some of this data, mm. that is what they call it as a big data, is something which is easy to maneuver through and easy to analyze it and be able to get some quick intelligence out of it. Mm -hmm. So if you look at cloud is something which many customers were not really open for it maybe five, six years back. They're concerned about security. Now they're open to it. So with adoption of cloud technologies, with the adoption of uh, things that are happening from the product side of it, I think this is at the right time for uh, this explosion to take place. Right, so let's talk about the talent and how and where the talent could feed in or fit in. And uh, how do you see those trends? And I think talent supply side is going to be an issue because uh, it is the ability to stitch the pieces mm -hmm. is going to be very, very critical. The system integration and system engineering is going to be of paramount importance. And while you can still get independent technologies from the form of cloud, security, mobile, and connect all of them as what we call them as NMAX, mm -hmm. network, mobility, analytics, cloud, and security and sensors. So how do you stitch all the pieces is going to be very critical. And creating a digital enterprise teams, mm -hmm. which will understand multitude of things. Sometimes you need to connect with the product development teams. Sometimes you need to connect with the customer service groups. Sometimes with the marketing groups. How do you make sure that you are able to collect all the requirements that come from multiple user functions and create a different uh, digital experience for your end customers is something which requires some kind of work that need to be done in building that skill set, mm -hmm. which will articulate the digital enterprise to the customers. Right, and uh, uh, how do you see, let's say, the next couple of years in terms of growth for this space in general and in specific? 
I think this space is likely to grow maybe at uh, 50 to 70 percent year on year since the base is small and this is likely to grow at a much faster pace at least for the next three to five years and th then the explosion happens which can really make this curve to be exponential and that is likely to happen around 2017 to 2020 where uh, taken automotive it could lead to autonomous vehicles because mm -hmm. while we are talking about connectivity at one end but the eventual form of connectivity could be an autonomous vehicle because mm -hmm. it can collect multiple sensor information across radar yeah, and we're sensors, already seeing it being and tested we're already seeing that right and that's not too far away mm -hmm. while somebody said 2025 is when you'll really see a fully autonomous vehicle but I see that it could happen five years earlier than that and same case in aircrafts where a lot of uh, focus is more of uh, selling aircrafts but it will move to selling efficiency to the airlines can you really operate aircrafts more efficiently can you do the fleet synchronization if you are in an airport which is fully congested if you are in the air can you get information about the congest uh, congestion levels at the air airport mm. the gate availability mm. can it speed up speed down can all of this information be uh, collected on a simultaneously mm. and feed that intelligence back to the pilot i think that is going to really uh, change the way the airports can run and uh, the efficiency of the right. fuel efficiency in the aircraft it's all going to change i think this would uh, be in and even the digital home that i talked about and the remote monitoring of uh, uh, power plants and one of the other classic example that we have seen is one of the customer came back and said they have about 700 turbines in north america we said we are going to double this capacity to 1500 over the next five years can you monitor them remotely at half the cost and can you bring the availability to the end power plant uh, customers and this will have much more than just the cost because you are going to uh, monitor the turbines if the temperature shoots up does the cooling system mm. kick on all of them can be monitored remotely and this can avert significant critical disasters mm. because you are not really allowing some Correct. critical threshold to be crossed so that is where this is going to really bring in safety efficiency different experience to the end customers and the overall performance improvements that are likely to be monitored remotely is going to really create a significant opportunities for everyone. Right. So last question, Karthik, and what is the one exciting project that you are looking forward to or working with in this whole space? I think we are What excites you personally? Yeah, I think three things that we are working on which really excite me. One is the connected cars mm. because I see this eventually shaping up to an autonomous vehicle mm. program and while it started off as a connected car. The second is connected home or digital mm. life platforms where you kind of converge technologies across energy, security, surveillance and entertainment. And the third would be the remote monitoring of equipments and uh, missions. I think that is really going to change how all of us would experience the product. Right. Sounds very exciting, Karthik. And thank you very much for speaking Thank with you. Us. Thank you. Thank you.